Real quick, before we start, we just wanted to say that we are in the process of revamping the Patreon, and one of the current plans is to put the most of or the entirety of the current season on Patreon to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, we will still continue to release things, or we still plan to release things weekly, uh, an episode a week, but if you want to watch more, or hopefully the whole thing, if I can get it all edited, you can patron and head over there and watch it along with us. Yay! So... Hello, everybody. I'm Will. And I'm Kristen. And this is So I'm Watching True Blood, Season 2, Episode 11. Frenzy. <laughs> A pretty good episode. One of the more filler. Like, it, it, it definitely is the episode that comes after Episode 10 and before Episode 12. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, correct. <laughs> this is absolutely episode 11. Oh, boy. Okay. We get Queen's Vivian. Yeah. Uh, is this a bad time? Uh, <laughs> a bad time? There's no such thing as bad. Or time, for that matter. Evan Rachel Wood. I remember being very excited for her when it happened, when mm -hmm. it came. I remember not liking her mm -hmm. when we watched it. I was very curious, interested, and even excited to revisit it to see if I feel the same. I feel mostly the same. Real, I feel almost the opposite. Really, I like her so much better now because I've come. Oh, I, I've worked we, on a lot of my internal misogyny. Let's say the thing. We didn't like Evan Rachel Wood. Yeah. So I've worked on a lot of my own internal misogyny, and I actually, th and I have come around on Evan Rachel Wood, and like, if I'm being honest, Westworld did a lot of that work for me, but I, I actually kind of love Sophia now. Okay. I thought she was a lot of, like, because I was sort of like a, what's it going to be like? And it ended up being, I liked it a lot better this time. I she's think still, she's like so over the top. But. Mm -hmm. it, uh, e e yeah. Um, the the timing of all this, this is when she was like in the throes of her go with relationship with Marilyn Manson. Yeah. And you were right when you said internalized misogyny mm -hmm. and there was a lot of stuff going on. My biggest issue, I, I appreciate that she's doing something She's doing a lot of it, and mm -hmm. she doesn't stop, because I think a lot of yeah. people would kind of be like, no? Okay, okay, I'll tone it down. Yeah. And she doesn't. No. She doesn't. <laughs> um, I love her now. Mm -hmm. I love her in Westworld. I think season one of Westworld was excellent, yeah. and I think she is exquisite in that, on that. I think my issue is I think I find her too young. Oh, that's I think fair. if she was... Yeah. Westworld. I think if she was third in her thirties doing this, sure. I would love it. But there's a uh, theater kid ambitiousness. I still feel that. I it's that's definitely it, and I still feel that because it's like she's too young to be trying to play as old as she's supposed to be, and she doesn't need a single other person in the scenes with her. Right. Like she, she is a. She, it's like she's on a track. It's like mm -hmm. an, a, an animatronic at Disney World that's going through the motions, it's whether like there's an she's audience or not. On Westworld. <laughs> I wasn't even making that joke, but again, it's like, I appreciate the glamour of it, and I, but she's also, it's just kind of psychobabble to, to a point that I think in the moment I, I was interpreting that as she was the gatekeeper to knowledge of the world, mm -hmm. and now having seen the whole show and then going back and revisiting it, I'm like, oh, maybe Queen Sophie Ann's just a nutter. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so I'm able to kind of, the way I was taking it on, because she goes on this, like, everything that exists imagined itself into existence. And then one day, if you just believe in something, mm -hmm. and you're just sort of like, what the fuck are you you're talking like, about? I, I don't buy it. Like, that's not what I, like, subscribe to. And also, I think part of it is she just is sort of like, I think she's older than Bill and she is sort of using that as currency to like make herself. Well, she's certainly using her power as currency. And she's making it to, to like make herself seem more important than she is. It's very sycophantic. Mm -hmm. And, and she just sort of like, she contradicts herself because she's like, gods don't exist. Gods never actually show up. They only exist in humans' minds. And then not 30 seconds later, she's like, I never said he was non-existent. I just said he never comes. Yeah. And I feel like if you called her out, she would be like, well, of course they exist now. Anything that's ever not existed yeah. once will exist. <laughs> and it's like, like it, 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 it feels- It's very Pinocchio answering the questions <laughs> in Shrek 2. I need to know how to kill a Maynard. You can't. 
She's convinced herself she's immortal, and so she is. William, surely you know that everything that exists imagined itself into existence. So you're fucking everybody in the dirt. Why not kill something and eat it raw? Hey, you're super extra pious. There's nothing you can't do. And each time you do, it just brings you one step closer to the divine. Yeah, or it feels like a, like a high schooler's attempt at, like, Lewis Carroll poetry. Well, that's the other thing, too. It's, like, from not an Evan Rachel Wood standpoint, but from a writing standpoint, it feels like what shallow people think deep people would say. <laughs> and so it, it, and it, I think the same goes for some of the shit Marianne spouts in this episode. Cause I'm sort of just like, I mean, I guess, but you are talking in circles and like words have lost all meaning. Like, what are we doing? But, I cannot. I was a little bit nervous to go back to this set because I loved it so much. I was afraid I was going to be disappointed. Mm. I'm not. No, it's amazing. It's better than I remember it being. It's called like Villa Cantita or something. Is it? I looked it up. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's, it's in Malibu. It's stunning. And I just love them sunbathing. Yeah. Because it's like, is that just performance? Which, I mean, that checks for what we know of Queens OVN. But for a minute, I was like, well, maybe they have like sun lamps or something. And I was like, well, I don't remember. Would UV light? It's the UV. It's So in most vampire lore, it's the UV part of it that is the bad part. So if you had like UV screens on windows, they could be in. Because on Angel, there are all kinds of things that have like UV reflective film. There was a show that aired concurrently with, I think this season of, of true blood. And this, this was the moment in time where networks discovered both sex position and summertime shows. Mm -hmm. I love that one called moonlight. No, oh. my mom loved Moonlight. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, Sophia miles from oh, yeah, that's underworld. Right. That's right. Uh, I love a summer show. There's something of oh, it's summer shows are great and delectable. underrated, and people still don't make enough summer. No, shows. and they use for whatever reason they used to seem like more like campier mm -hmm. or like you got more genre and stuff. But there was a show called The Gates. Mm. I don't remember if it was any good or not. I enjoyed it, so I'd watch True Blood. I'd go home and watch The Gates. But Rona Mitra, is she the blonde? No. Rada Mitchell's the blonde. Yeah. Rona Mitra's the severe brunette. Yeah. Rona Mitra was a vampire, like, lady. She's like, also an underworld. Yeah. <laughs> but she was like a, like an upper crust, yeah. like, a, like a rich vampire, like rich suburban lady. Uh, and they would have, they had sunscreen. Mm. And so every morning she was Special like smearing sunscreen. lotion yeah. all over. Yeah. And I was like, I liked that. I thought that was fun. It only lasts for one season, so we should revisit. We've also been throwing around, like we've got a lot of brilliant but canceled shows. Yeah. That are so niche, but it's like, does anybody remember Gross Point or Kitchen mm -hmm. Confidential or Better Off Ted? Got GCB two, I think two but, seasons. Yeah. yeah, we kind of would love to to do some deep dives into those. We just yeah. don't know if there's an audience for it. I would do Pushing Daisies in that. There's absolutely an audience for that. Less than a heart, and even. I'm putting it on the schedule second for next year. Yes. I'm doing it oh, right it's now. It's perfect for springtime mm -hmm. too. Okay, yes, I can't wait. Okay. We have our we have our next two shows yeah. for the end of this year. This year and our first two shows for next year lined up. <laughs> so exciting. The years start coming and they don't stop coming. I love I love doing the TV shows. Mm -hmm. True Blood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so she makes Bill play along with her. He's not good at it. Like, he not even remotely. Also, okay, I just, I, like, it. this was how it was at the beginning of me and Trevor's Buffy coverage, too. I fucking hate Angel on the TV show Buffy. Once he is unsaddled from his Romeo and Juliet bullshit, I think he is an incredible character. I feel the exact same about Bill. And it's, it's... I, I have been iffy on him for like a minute, but it's like now that I'm like, you stupid bitch. He will not play along and he wastes an entire day. He could have gotten so much out of her. Like, putting her off and saying, no, I don't want to eat your person. No, I don't want to eat your person. And so he, he stays there for an entire day because he has to sleep somewhere. And then still the next night, he's like sunbathing 
But he, you can tell he hates it. He keeps looking at his watch. And finally, she He's has like to, openly rolling his eyes at her. She like, has to bully him into like. A game feeding, of Yahtzee. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, yeah, defeating on. Defeating on what, Ludus or whatever his name is. <laughs> I just like, my dude. I don't know how much fast, like, how do you not understand how much faster things will go if you just give in? The reality like, of your own world. Like, it's. There's, just play along. Plus, it's like so insulting. It like it even goes to a Game of Thrones place where it's like eat the bread and salt and shut your fucking mouth, or they can kill you. <laughs> like, what was that? That's like a whole thing in all of Game of Thrones. Is it's like once you like eat bread and salt with the, it's like a welcoming gesture, okay. and so it's like, um, what? It's not just welcoming though. It's like a kinship. It's like what, like a breaking bread. Once mm-hmm. you break bread together you can't do violence. And so that's another reason the Red Wedding was such a huge deal because they were like, they had already yeah. then done the ceremony and everything. <laughs> Sorry, I, that was no, like a fine. whole tangent. Uh, there's also Hadley. I barely remember Hadley. She's in like six more episodes. Well, I was about to say, like nothing really comes of her though, right? I don't remember. Because it's like, they establish her not memorably. And then when they when they pull that, like bring that back up where we're like, huh? Mm -hmm. Like at no point was I not like, who the fuck is this? Yeah. And it feels really contrived because it's also so inappropriate of Bill not to tell her that Gran is dead. I think it would, mm, you really? Yeah. I thought he I don't know. I thought about it. I thought that maybe he felt like it was inappropriate to tell her in that manner. Like, shouldn't Sookie tell her? Or so because it's like they're well, not really because he. Do- it's not just that he doesn't tell her. He says, "How's Grant? I'd love to talk to her sometime, but I owe her so much money." <laughs> I think it's best that you are not in touch. Oh. So it's like I think I'm I not- filled in the blank that he yeah. was like, "You should talk to." Us. No, he's like. I'm not going to tell you. And also I don't want you to have any knowledge of your family. And it's, I don't even, you just, it, it's just like a weird coincidence that I don't think really f- earns. Yeah. It's, pl- I don't know. It, it, it was, it was very strange <laughs> plot real estate <Yeah. laughs> to be using. So she tells him how to kill her, how to kill the main ad. She has to, she's like trying to inhabit a body somehow or like get the God to inhabit a body. And so she brings up the shifters and, and or the, the wares as she says. And basically they have to like convincingly make Marianne think that the God Dionysus has come because then she'll be at her most vulnerable and that's when they can kill her. Mm-hmm. Cause they're going to like couple or whatever. Yeah. And there's an egg. I forgot about the I, the literal egg. Yeah. It was like it was new to me. Yeah. <laughs> there's a terrible Terra plot. Lafayette and Sookie and Letty May have Terra. She's saying all kinds of d- horrible things. Mm-hmm. The show doesn't make it clear, but I'm with you. I'm going to assume that she's still high. At least high. a little under the influence. Yeah, yeah, because she's just, she's being. She says no one's going to love Lafayette because mm-hmm. he's a freak and he's jealous because she found true love with eggs, which let's be honest. And then she says Sookie can only find someone dead to fuck her. And it's just like, that was a Sookie choice. Though, like, like, Sookie wasn't swatting him off, right? (laughs) And the fucking Letty May, I this is when she's useless, just like because she just buys it. Tara, in in her still like foggy brain, is like, Well, I'll forgive you for everything if you let me out now because she's trying to go rescue eggs. Mm -hmm. She's like, I have to get eggs out of there, so like, let me go. And he, they just are like, no, no, no. And she convinces Letty May that she'll forgive her for everything if she just lets her go. And so then Letty May pulls a gun on Lafayette, who is still extremely traumatized. And although I, it was Ginger that like shot him accidentally. So. I think the whole ordeal. The whole, the whole thing, obviously. But again, it's that thing that I've been talking about where it's like the, the, the tones don't quite mesh. It's not 100%. Because he's like yeah. acting in a drama yeah. and then we cut to Alexander Skarsgård in like in a Southern May's Lady clothes. church yeah. dress. And it's like... I pity you. 
I don't hate you like your mama does. You can't help what you are. It, it's 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 very strange. I do love the Sookie and Lafayette oh, yeah. scenes that we get, and I feel like we don't get nearly enough of them. Not going forward. I feel like they should be much closer than they are. I agree. I, I don't know what it is about television writers that they don't understand the bond between, like, the, like, fabulous girl and the gay. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. unless it's, like, a Will and Grace, but it's, like, because we're dealing with it on Riverdale where where – Kevin and Betty haven't shared it, or Veronica for that matter. Yeah. Like they haven't shared a scene in God knows how long. And they, yeah, I'm not going to get into the reveal of it all, but I, yes, I agree with you 100%. So yeah, they go to find Tara. This is the funny thing. It's just, it's just so bad because she willingly does it. Yeah. Like she's not glamored. Mm-hmm. She's not like, and why the guilt trip works here, but not when Tara was in prison. Exactly. I, and I think I. This is like so much more comfortable. She's just like cuffed with Lafayette's fuzzy sex cuffs to the fucking. And there's quite literal life and death stakes. Like I I don't, it doesn't check for me in a way. It's the useless part of, of Letty Mae. That's just like, you're not a good mom. You're not a good person. You're not helping the situation at all. Just because you're sober doesn't mean anything to me. But it's the kind of thing that I'm like, well, then so just let the character sort of like disappear from the show. And they don't. They don't. She they stays don't. on the show. And I don't, I don't. Eh. Yeah. Um, Hoyt turns on Jessica real quick. I should have listened to Vampire Bill about you. Which also was Vampire. I mean, I guess he was like he was warning like, you that don't, she's dangerous. You don't know about her. She's like at the edge of her rope or whatever. She's hungry, like all this stuff, which like. I guess, but like, I don't know. In Jessica's mind, I can also see where she's like, she was saying hateful things about both of us. And he was like, she's my mom. She's allowed. Like, she's the one that's allowed to say the hateful things about me. And I'm like, I mean, I guess, but you don't have to take that. <laughs> like, Yeah. So they go home. Maxine is still crazed. It's pretty great. Maxine yeah. fodder, if I'm being honest. She's <laughs> making this disgusting looking casserole with candy bars and potato chips and hot sauce and like lots of pepper. And he is going to love it. I don't have the heart to tell her. It's all down the hill from here. What the hell are you talking about? Lots of pepper. <laughs> um, and she drops some truth bombs on Hoyt about his dad who killed himself, but she said it was a burglar so that they could get the life insurance money, which I mean, quick thinking on Maxine's. No, but 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 she is a, she is a, a fascinating and pretty despicable character. And I mean, and granted it's like, that's information that he possibly should, should he? Well, I think now he should, as we figured out a couple Especially weeks ago. Especially if you're going to keep using his dad as a weapon. Yeah, he's 28 years old, and he should know that kind of thing now because it also especially helps get keep getting him out of Maxine's clutches. Because it's like, as long as he is still in Maxine's clutches, but he, it, he can't fully be a... It's crime. the kind of thing that I'm like, I can't decide if she was doing... The, if she did that to protect... Hoyt or to protect her own reputation? Both. I think more her own reputation. Yeah, though. is uh, and so great. So, um, Marianne gets God. A lot happened. It's like I, the more I'm talking about it, the more I'm like, I don't like this. It's, it's <sighs> but I, it's the second to last episode, yeah, so yeah. things need to Everything be in dire needs straits. To be but in its place. I just the, the the episode before was so charged, like yeah. things were just like chugging, chugging along, and now it's like, but you're undoing all of the stuff. Yeah. Uh, Tara, Marianne gets Tara back and well she tries to do her jittery thing and Tara's like that doesn't work on me anymore and it's like that's a, an intuitive leap that I don't know how you totally made it I feel like they maybe I feel like Sookie inferred mm, okay but still it's like don't challenge her then be, right. be yes Marianne and then run away you because know what I mean like Marianne hauls off and like punches her right in the bruise right in the cheek bruise and then she's got the black eyes again and then she also gets Lafayette by the yeah. end. You made a comment about not necessarily loving Michelle Forbes. Yeah. 
And I think she's particularly good in this episode. This episode is because she's unhinging and it goes into I think she's like better a, there. I think yeah. it was something it was something on the more subtle side, and you were like, yeah. I didn't love that choice. Yeah. But I think once she's gone full evil queen, yeah. it feels That's great. I think I think the issue for me, and maybe this is maybe if I were to watch it again, um with this mindset, because it only just hit me, that I kind of feel like she's acting like a bad actress. She's she's acting like Mary Ann is bad at acting. <laughs> and so that's where I'm like, maybe Well, we were talking about it with, with yeah. Alexander playing Eric play that's right. a bad actor. Yeah. But I don't know. It, I, and I, and frankly, I think I think it's the psycho babble that yeah. just you can an actor can only do so much. hundred <laughs> percent. Which in that case I think is part of the problem with Evan Rachel Wood as well. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I think her am, her her ambitions her stomach was bigger than her eye. her eyes. <laughs> I think her eyes were bigger than yeah. her stomach is what I think. I like, I think she was like, Oh, I'm going to come in and do something. I'm going to come and she, in. I mean, she did. I'm come in hot. <laughs> but the, the finesse wasn't quite yeah. there. I haven't rewatched across the universe. Cause I didn't fully love it. Granted, I wasn't quite ready for it at that point. You want to talk about a theater kid thing. Theater kids earnestly singing Beatles songs at one another. TV Caprio singing, I want to hold your hand. That That's was actually cute. great. That was, that was a great part. That but. was cute. <laughs> yeah, the fucking <laughs> Arlene and Terry getting <laughs> Suki and, and Lafayette. I'm going to kick that bitch's evil ass out of my grand's house and then you are going to shoot her. In the fucking head. Right. Hey, y'all are trespassing. You're going to have to pay a fine. Because seemingly they were just eavesdropping just hanging like out they were just hanging screen. listening yeah. and then they waited for the exact moment to be like ah gotcha and they dropped down it was very funny yeah. the, the 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 town everybody in the town even the extras and the day players so are funny. doing exquisite work yeah it, it is there and because we even had to rewind because arlene went on this sort of tangent about whether or not take the drugs. Yeah. In which she like melded four separate <laughs> idioms together. Yeah. Cause if the job ain't worth doing all out, then why order hamburger unless there's steak at home or something like that, right? So it was very don't write can't. checks with your mouth <laughs> that you can't cash with your ass. <laughs> Teach a man to fish and there's no I in team. Yeah. <laughs> They, they did get Lafayette, and they did a number on Grand's house. Mm-hmm. It hurts. It's disgusting. It feels yeah. like the, the emotional impact is there. And especially to have fucking Tara and Eggs being the ones destroying Grand's everything in Grand's room, her just Ugh. breaking everything in Grand's room. Uh, Sam takes, well, they find Kobe and Lisa. Lisa feral in the woods, having not eaten in two days and concerned about their mother. Yeah. They play it. They, they they take it on the chin, but it's pretty. They play it for comedy, but apparently that microwave ain't been working for Lisa. It's pretty bleak when you get down to it. <laughs> <laughs> and so Sam smartly takes them to Bill. Eric. Or Eric. They were like, where's yeah. Bill? And so he smartly yeah. takes them to Eric. It is breathtaking. The tableau. I will pull it. Of him in a gray suit with a black like shirt silvery underneath. gray like a it's lounge like a shark skin suit almost like a lounge singer on a piano yeah with he's very like shame <laughs> with pam in a head to toe sequined jumpsuit red sequin jumpsuit why should i help you shifter because i need your help perm yeah yes Clips. Everything. Oh. Perfection. It was, it was so good. Uh, Eric has a fascination with children. children human children. Because they're tiny humans. Teacup Just, humans. Tea cu- <laughs> good night, tiny humans. You guys got. Love it. Got so much out of that. He's helping them? Yeah, he's he is also going to Sophia to find out how to kill a Maynard. Mm-hmm. How, and I'll bet he's going to play fucking ball and be back the same time as Bill. How the three of them didn't share screen time. Him and Bill and Sam? No, Sophie Ann. Oh. Because she's even like, would you two just fuck each other? And like, this is, you're boring. Yeah. And there she's right. And just, I cannot believe that they were on set 
Because again, the inside that is that yeah. place, mm-hmm. and that the three of them didn't have a scene together. It is sort of tragic. She would climb him like a tree. Mm-hmm. It just like a hot Swedish tree. <laughs> Salt your licorice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, so, uh, and then uh, uh, Jason also, and- Also, sorry, he fl- Eric flies oh, for yeah. the first time in this episode. Whoa. And when he gets there, his hair is all wind tousled. Oh, Billy, this paranoia, it's really quite unbecoming. He's like you're doing this, trying to like bring it back down. I forgot that they they do the whoosh. Yeah, like they take the the shot of him and make it go whoo. I, I thought I remembered it being more of like a trick, like mm. an off screen, like the camera just cut to them being like whoa. Yeah. But he does it a little bit, not very frequent. Yeah. Um, but I, I guess it's noteworthy that Eric he, f- he flies a, a bit more in the books, if I'm remembering. Oh yeah, isn't he like flying on all the covers and she's riding him like a in some of them never ending yeah. story? <laughs> I think <laughs> they are like way more in game than Sookie and Bill are. Uh, so then Jason and. Andy, Andy have some material. Uh, I mean, it was good. I, it, it certainly was established in season one that Andy was out to get Jason, but they're playing it like they were like rivals, like they were like the same age group. No, Andy and, is older, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I, I do, I appreciate them being like romantic rivals in the town, sure, because they are in an age bracket. Like Andy's not forty; he's like or, like thir- or forty thirties, yeah. Um, and so. That is, you know, eligible men in the town of Bontomp. So they compete with each other. And he basically is like, I don't like how easy everything is for you. Well, and the thing with Andy is he he's hardly like classic Hollywood specimen. But Chris Bauer is a pretty, he's an okay looking guy. For the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And if he would just not be such a. Just loosen up like 10%. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but it, 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 it does well. It ends on a, on a decent note. Mm-hmm. And then um, the episode ends with Lafayette getting sucky yeah. and she screams bloody murder. Where you been at? I was looking for you. He screams a little too much. For the high heavens. For the, like, for the situation, it's like, that's not the scariest thing going on that Lafayette got taken as well. So it's just this, like, blood-curdling scream. It's what she does. It is what she does, but. So I think that that was it. That is pretty much it. That's that on that. Yeah. So we'll be back with the finale in about a week. Bye. Bye.